Professor Ellen Kleiss, soon to be Dr. Ellen Kleiss, it's a joy to have you here uh, talking about the Theology and Arts program at Memphis Theological Seminary, which you, you know intuitively because you incarnate it. Uh, you are an incarnational theologian and a soma praxi that's, that's your spiritual discipline that, that is what you're working on in the, in the university in San, in San Francisco. So we're so honored to have you here. I'll, I'm, um, I can speak personally with, with the class that you and I shared teaching on prophetic imagination that uh, what you bring to the seminary is so vital and needed and in, in a, you, you sort of anchor us in spiritual discipline and direction here. And so um, thank you for being here. You honor and bless us. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about theology and arts. Uh, I always sort of bump up against folks that are saying, well, you know, what about the theology part of it? Or in, particularly in a class, and I think you and I are experiencing mm -hmm. this too, it's like, are we, are we doing the theology or when's the arts part or, or when's the theology part? And remember we would respond as, as yes. Exactly. You know, exactly. yes to that. So can you, can you, would you mind touching a little bit on the, 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 the fact that it's not a, but either or, but it's a both and. It's, well, you know, we're, we're created in a double helix. That's who we are. And our DNA is in a spiral dancing together. And so foundationally, we are both theology and art. Theology is art, art is theology, mm -hmm. because we are co-creators, in my view. Mm -hmm. We are co-creators to heal and bless a broken world. And I think God's invitation always is for a fuller, richer, deeper, and that means a more playful self. And creativity comes from that, from that not knowing, from the wondering, and mm -hmm. the willingness to work together and play together to discover what we can become, what we're invited to be next. And it's both prophecy and preaching and play wow. for me. Yeah, it's amazing that you mentioned that because we just had Kirk Whalen in earlier and he was talking about to be an improvis you know, imp mm -hmm. improvising in jazz, which there's nobody any better than right. you. You have to ha be vulnerable mm -hmm. and you have to be willing to let God move through you. And you know, with his, his horn being his instrument, it was like yes. God breathed through him and he breathed through his horn. And I'm hearing you say sort of the same sort of thing that, that, that we are, when we're really in the spirit, we are, we are actually letting, letting being free, and, and the freedom allows us to sort of be in tune with the spirit. Yes, absolutely. And there is a breathing in all of that. I mean, my exhalation, right sitting here, becomes your inhalation, and your inhalation becomes my exhalation. So we're informing and inspiriting each other in community, and that's what I think is so cool about theology arts happening here in Memphis because Memphis is a gritty, authentic, complex, wonderfully mysterious and inviting and threatening place all at the same time. <laughs> I grit, therefore I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> grit is great. Yeah, it's great. That, you, you just nailed Memphis indeed. And, 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 and I think what we, what we, what's so wonderful about Memphis Theological Seminary is it's a microcosm of that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's got all those disparate things that come together. And when folks come here and worship, they realize the experience is greater than their own sort of, of, of personal experience, not to diminish their personal experience, but it's sort of a widening of the, of the, of the, of the, of the binders sort of that we come in with because we're all sort of mono theologians when we come in and it adds a sort of polyvalence to that. Yes. And, 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 and it's sort of the thing like you're talking about, we exchange we're respiration and inhalation and exhalation. It, 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 it gathers a, a, a momentum With through inspiration. worship. Yeah. Inspiration, yeah. That's well, great. And to, and to Kirk's point, the vulnerability, the willing vulnerability to be with others and people who choose to come here are self-selecting for a kind of tension that you wouldn't find if you're going to a seminary that's one denomination or one kind of teaching Good or point. one kind of tradition. And we have here a complex diversity 
of people, of social location, of different spiritual disciplines and ways of thinking that we get to test ourselves with and against and over and against mm -hmm. and all those other prepositions. And I think that's fabulous. And we learned, remember, we learned so much from that class. Ah. And, and you're, what, you're, what you led me to struck, struck me to think that, um, particularly in that class of prophetic imagination, remember that we, one thing that, we, that was wonderful about that is there was a sort of a, a, a creative crisis that occurred when, when, when we sort of allowed this prophetic spirit for the, 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 the folks there. And I remember you and I at times just marveling at what was happening because it was this sort of chaos and creation and all this stuff mm -hmm. sort of dancing mm -hmm. like the double, the double helix that you yes. mentioned. Yes, and, and as teachers, we had to restrain ourselves from certainty and we had to restrain ourselves from having to have answers and plans so the spirit could work in us and through us for the class. And there were times I was really humbled at what's inside people just waiting to feel safe enough and free enough to come out. Mm, yeah. And I think that's how social justice can take place. I mean, usually systems change when we can enter the soft part of the system and have the system respond. But we have to have the courage to risk that, mm. to speak our truth and be willing to trust that what we're given is ours to say. How it's received, we're not responsible for. And that's where somapraxy comes in for me. There are all kinds of languages in our bodies, the cold chill down our back, mm -hmm. the headache that grips, the knot in the stomach. Mm -hmm. And as a culture, we've distanced ourselves from that really primitive, primordial knowing. And I think part of what happens in creative arts is we have to turn to that place because it's not going to come from our heads. Mm -hmm. It's going to come from other richer, deeper places. Indeed, yeah. And to trust each other with that. Yeah. Well, all I can respond to that is amen. <laughs> and, 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 and thank you so much for coming and, and sharing. Thank you for being Ellen and what you, what you uh, um, incarnate. You're, John, you're, you are you're, such a treat. I cannot yeah. tell you. It is, just, it is wonderful to well, get to have any kind of conversation with you, even when filmed. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.